performance. This is a virtual performance of the Bard's play, an attempt from our side to expose the students to the beauty of Shakespeare's drama. The students who portray the trial scene are from the Art of Communication course of Camp Kitzel. And the diversity of our classes is portrayed by these children who hail from all parts of India as well as abroad. These children are doing Shakespeare for the first time. And so please encourage them and enjoy the various nuances that they all portray in the varied characters. I now introduce the cast of the play in alphabetical order. Antonio, the merchant, is portrayed by Harsh Pandey of Lucknow. Harsh is 10 years old, studying grade five, and he is the merchant. Hello. Basanio, the merchant's friend, is being rendered by Granthik B. Dikshit. He's 10 years old, studying grade five, and he is from Bengaluru. Hi. Aro Verma is the Duke. He is studying grade eight and is 12 years of age and hails from Chennai. Hello. Graciano, the sarcastic wit, taunting Shylock, is Anand Lakshmikant. He's studying in grade eight. He's 13 years old and is from Pune, Maharashtra. Nerissa is the maid who helps her mistress in the trial and the portrayal is done by Shivani Shrishti Lakar, grade six, age 11, Assam. Hello. Portia, the lawyer, is played by the talented Ishanvi Jain. Ishanvi is the lawyer Portia. She is 11 years old. She studies in grade six, hails from Dugapur, West Bengal. Good evening. Salerio is portrayed by Rayanj Patak, age nine, and studying in grade five. He is from Thane, Maharashtra. Hi. Shashrik Chauhan leaves us mesmerized by his rendition of the shrewd Shylock. He's 10 years of age and is studying in grade five in Hong Kong. Hello. I know you all are waiting excitedly for the scene to unravel before your eyes. But before we can allow the scene to be played out, I would like to narrate the story that takes place leading to the trial scene. Here goes the story. A young Venetian, Bassanio, needs a loan of 3,000 ducats so that he can woo Portia, a wealthy Venetian heiress. He approaches his friend Antonio, a merchant. Antonio is short of money because all his wealth is invested in his fleet, which is currently at sea. He goes to a Jewish money lender, Shylock, who hates Antonio because of Antonio's anti Semitic behavior towards him. Shylock, nevertheless, agrees to make the short term loan. But in a moment of dark humor, he makes a condition the loan must be repaid in three months or Shylock will exact a pound of Antonio's flesh. Antonio agrees, confident that his ships will return in time. Because of the terms of Portia's will, all suitors must choose from among three caskets, one of which contains a portrait of her. If he chooses that, he may marry Portia, but if he doesn't, he must vow never to marry or court another woman. The princes of Morocco and Aragon fail the test and are rejected. Bassanio chooses the lead casket, which contains her picture, and Portia readily and happily agrees to marry him. Meanwhile, two of Antonio's ships have been wrecked, and Antonio's creditors are pressurizing him for repayment. Word comes to Bassanio about Antonio's predicament, and he hurries back to Venice leaving his Portia behind. Portia follows him, accompanied by her maid, Nerissa. They're disguised as a male lawyer and his clerk. When Bassanio arrives, arrives, the date for the repayment to Shylock has passed and Shylock is demanding his pound of flesh. Even when Bassanio offers more than the amount in repayment, a 10 times more amount 
Shylock is intent on seeking his revenge on the Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, the much awaited The Merchant of Venice opens. Please applaud as the curtain rises to showcase the performance of my novice artist. Scene one, Venice, a court of justice. Enter the Duke, the Magnificos, Antonio, Bassanio, Graciano, Celerio, and others. What? Is Antonio here? He is ready at the door. He comes, my lord. Ready, so please, your grace. I am sorry for thee. Thou art come to answer a stony adversary, an inhuman wretch, incapable of pity, void and empty, from any dram of mercy. I have heard your grace had taken great pains to qualify his rigorous cause. But since he stands obdurate than that no lawful means can carry me out of his endless reach, I do oppose my patience to his fury and am armed to suffer with the quietness of spirit, the very tyranny and rage of his. Go on and call the Jew into the court. Sir Shylock. Shylock, the world thinks and I think so too, that thou but leads this fashion of thy malice to the last hour of act, and then tis thought thou that thou show thy mercy and remorse more strange than is thy strange apparent cruelty, and where now where thou now exacts the penalty, which is the pound of this poor merchant's flesh, and thou wilt not only lose the poor feature, but touched with human gentleness and love. Forgive a moiety of the principle. We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. And possess your grace of what I purpose, and by our holy Sabbath, the vice sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. If you deny it, with the danger like upon your charter and your city's freedom, you'll ask me, why not the choose to have a weight of cane flesh when you receive 3,000 ducats? This is no answer, thou unfeeling man, to excuse the current of thy cruelty. What? Wouldst thou have a serpent sting thee twice? I pray you, think your question with the Jew. You may as well go stand upon the beach and with the main flood bear his usual hide. You may as well use question with the wolf why he hath the you bleed for the lamb. His Jewish heart. Therefore, I do beseech you, make no more offers, use no further means, but with all brief and plain conveniency, let me have the judgment and the Jew his will. For thy three thousand buckets, here is six. What judgment shall I dread doing more in six parts and every part a ducat? I would not draw them, I would have my bond. How shalt thou hope for mercy, rendering none? What judgment shall I dread doing no wrong? You have among you many a purchased slave, which like your asses and your dogs and mules, you use in abject and in slavish parts because you bought them. Shall I say to you, let them be free? Marry them to your heirs? Why sweat them under burdens? Let their beds be made as soft as yours and let their pallets be seasoned with such wines. You will answer, the slaves are ours. So do I answer you. The pound of flesh which I demand of him is dearly bought. This is mine and I will have it. If you deny me, fall upon your law. There is no force in the decrees of Venice. I stand for judgment. Answer, shall I have it? Upon my power, I may dismiss this court, unless Bellario, a learned doctor who I, who I, who I have sent for to determine this, come here today. My lord, your stay is without a messenger from the letters from the doctor. You come from Padua. Bring us the letter. Call the messenger. Enter Nerissa, dressed like the lawyer's clerk. Came you from Padua? From Bellario? From both, my lord. Bellario greets your grace. Presenting a letter. Why dost thou wet your knife so earnestly? A forfeiture from the bankrupt there. Not on thy soul, but on thy soul, has Jew. Thou makest thy knife keen, but no metal can. No, not the hangman's axe. Where half the keenness of thy sharp envy. Can no pierce pierce thee? No, none that thou hast wit enough to make. Oh, 
be thou damned, inexecurable dog. Till thou canst rail the seal from off my bone, thou with defense thou longs to speak so loud. Repair thou wit, good youth, or it will fall. To cure this ruin, I stand you for the law. This letter from Bellario doth commend a young and learned doctor to our court. Where is he? He attended here hard by. To know your answer, where you'll admit him. With all my heart. Enter Portia, dressed like a doctor of law. Give me your hand. Come you from old Bellario? I did, my lord. You are welcome. Take your place. Are you acquainted with the difference that holds this present question in the court? I have informed thoroughly of the cause. Which is the merchant here and visited you? Antonio and old Shylock, both stand forth. Is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. Of a strange nature is the suit you follow, yet in such room that the Venetian law cannot impugn you as you do proceed. You stand within his danger, do you not? Aye, so he says. Do you confess the bond? I do. Then must the Jew be merciful? On what compulsion must I? Tell me that. Quality of mercy is not strange. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. Upon the place beneath, it is twice best. It besseth him that gives and him that takes. This mightiest and the mightiest it becomes. The throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty. Wherein God said the jail and fear of kings, but mercy is above the sceptered spade. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, an earthly power, God then show likest gods, when mercy seasons justice. Therefore, Jew, though justice be thy plea, consider this, that in the course of justice, none of us should see salvation. We do pray for mercy, and that same prayer God teaches all to render, the deeds of mercy. I have spoke thus much to mitigate the justice of thy plea. Which if thou follow the strict court of Venice, must need give sentence against the merchant sure. My deeds upon my head, I pray the Lord, the penalty and forfeit of my bond. Is he not able to discharge the money? Yes, here I tender it for him in the court. Yeah, twice the sum, if that will not suffice. I'll be bound to pay it ten times or over, or forfeit of my hands, my head, my heart, to do a great right, do a little wrong, and curb this cruel devil of his will. It must not be. There is no power in Venice can alter a decree established. It may be recorded for a precedent, and many an error by the same example will rush into the state. It cannot be. Ah, uh, Daniel, come to judgment. Yeah, ah, uh, Daniel. Oh, wise young judge, how I do honor thee. I pray, let me look upon the bond. Here, this is most reverend doctor. Here it is. Let's try the money offer thee. An oath, an oath. I have an oath in heaven. Shall, shall I lay perjury upon my soul? No, not for Venice. Why? This bond is so fit. And lawfully by this, the Jew may claim a pound of flesh to be by him cut off. Nearest the merchant's heart. Be merciful. Take trust in money. Bid me take the bond. When it is paid according to the tenor, it does appear you are a worthy judge. You know the law. Your exposition hath been most sound. I charge you by the law. Therefore, you are a well-deserving pillar. Proceed to judgment. By my soul, I swear, there is no power in the tongue of man to alter me. I stay here on my bond. Most thoroughly, I do beseech the court to give the judgment. By then, thus it is. You must prepare your bosom for his knife. Oh, noble judge. Oh, excellent young man. 
for the intent and purpose of law, had full relation to the penalty, but should appear it due upon the bonds. This is very true, O oh, wise and upright judge. How much more elder art thou than thy looks? Therefore, they bear your bosom. Ay, his breast, so says the bond. Doth it not, noble judge? Nearest his heart, those are the very words. So, are there balance here to be the flesh? I have them ready. Have I some surgeon, Sherlock, on your charge to stop his wounds, lest to do bleed to death? Is it so nominated in the bond? It is not so expressed, but what of that? It were good you do so much for charity. I cannot find it. This is not in the bond. You merchants, have you anything to say? Not little. I'm armed and well prepared. Give me your hand, Bassanio. Fare you well. Read not that I'm falling to this for you. Commend me to your honorable wife. Tell her the process of Antonio's end. Say how I loved you. Speak me fair and death. And when the tale is told, bid her be judged whether Bassanio had not once a love. Repair but you that you shall lose your friend. And he repents not that he pays your debt. For if the Jew do cut but deep enough, I pray i pay it presently with all my heart. Antonio, I am married to a wife which is as dear to me as life itself. But life itself, my wife, and all the world are not with me esteemed about thy life. I would lose all. I sacrifice them all here to this devil to deliver you. Your wife would give you little thanks for that if she were by to hear you make the offer. I have a wife whom I protest, I love. If would she were in heaven, so she could entreat some power to change this courage Jew. This well offered behind her back, the vision make else an unquiet house. A pound of that same merchant's flesh is thine. The court awards it and the law doth give it. Most rightful judge. And you must cut this flesh from off his breast. The law allows it and the court awards it. Most learned judge, a sentence come prepare. Hurry, a little, there is something else. This bond God give thee here no jot of blood. The words expressly are a pound of flesh. Take then thy bond, take thou thy pound of flesh. But in the cutting it, if thou dost shed one drop of Christian blood, thy lands and goods, are by the laws of Venice. Confess, Kate, unto the state of Venice. Oh, upright judge, marked you, O oh, learned judge. Is that the law? That's not she'll see the act. For as thou urges justice, be assured, thou shalt have justice more than thou desirest. Oh, oh learned judge, marked you, a oh, learned judge. I take this offer. Then pay the bond thrice and let the Christian go. The money. Soft. The Jew shall have all justice. Soft. No haste. He shall have nothing but the penalty. Oh, Jew, an upright judge, a learned judge. Therefore, prepare thee to cut off the flesh. Shed thou no blood, nor cut thou less, nor more, but just a pound of flesh. If thou cut more, or less than just a pound, be it but so much as makes it light or heavy in a substance, or the division of the twentieth part of one poor scruple, nay, if the scale do turn, but in the estimation of a hair, thou diest till all thy goods are confiscated. A second Daniel, a Daniel Jew, now in federal, I have you on the hip. Why not the Jew first? Take thy for feature. Give me my principal and let me go. How do you for thee? Here it is. He had refused it in open court. He shall have merely justice and his bond. A Daniel, still say I, a second Daniel. I thank thee, Jew, for teaching me that word. Shall I not have barely my principal? 
Sunset has nothing but the full feature. To be so taken, I die pill. Jill? Why then the devil give him good of it? I'll say no longer question. Terry, Jill, the law has yet another hold on you. It is enacted in the law's offense. If it be proved against an alien, that by direct or indirect attempts, he see the life of any citizen, the party against the which he doth contrive, shall seize one half of his goods, the other half comes to the privy coffer of the state, and often his life lies in mercy of the duke only, against all other voice. Down therefore, and beg mercy of the duke. That thou shalt see the difference of our spirits. I pardon thee life before thou ask it. For half thy wealth, it is Antonio's. The other half comes to the general state, which humblest may drive unto a fine. Aye, for the state, not for Antonio. Nay, take my life and all. Pardon, not that. Take my house when you do take the proud that doth sustain my house. You take my life when you do take the means whereby I live. What mercy can you render him, Antonio? A photo gratis, nothing else, for God's sake. So please, my lord, the duke and all the court to quit the fine for one half of his goods. I'm content, so he will let me have the other half in use to render it upon his debt unto the gentleman that lately stole his daughter. Two things provided no that for his favor he presently become a Christian, the other that he do record a gift. Here in the coat of all he dies possess unto his son Lorenzo and his daughter. He shall do this, or else I, I do recant the pardon that I late pronounced here. Art thou contented, Jew? What dost thou say? I'm content. Look, draw a deed of gift. I pray you, give me leave to go from hence. I'm not well. Send the deed after me, and I will sign it. Get thee gone, but do it. Exit Shylock, and exuant the duke and his train. Most worthy gentlemen, I and my friend have by your wisdom been this day acquitted of grievous penalties in lieu whereof. Three thousand ducats due unto the Jew. We freely cope your courteous uh, pains withal. I'll stand indebted over and above in love and service to you evermore. He is well paid, that is well satisfied. And I, delivering you, am satisfied, and therein do account myself well paid. Dear sir, of course, I must attempt you further. Take some remembrance of us. As a tribute, not as a fee, grant me two things. I pray you not to deny me and to pardon me. You press me far, and therefore I will yield. To Bassanio. And for your love, I'll take this ring from you. Do not draw back your hand. I'll take no more. And you will love shall not deny me this. This ring? Good sir, alas, it's a trifle. I'll not shame myself to give you this. I will have nothing else but only this. And now, methinks, I have a mind to it. There's more depends on this than on the value. The dearest ring in Venice will I give you and find it out by proclamation. Only for this, I pray you, pardon me. I see, sir, you are lived in an office. You taught me first how to beg. And now me thinks, you teach me how a beggar should be answered. Good sir, this ring was given me by my wife, and when she put it on, she made me vow that I should neither sell, nor give, nor lose it. That excuse serves many men to save their gifts. And if your wife be not a mad woman, and know how well I have deserved this ring, she would not, not hold out any me forever. For giving it to me. Well, peace be with you. Excellent Portia and Nerissa. Bassanio, let him have the ring. Let her deserve exam, my love, without be valued against your wife's commandant. Go, Graciano. 
run and overtake him. Give him the ring and bring him if thou can canst unto Antonio's house. Away, make haste. Exit Graciano. Come you, and I will tell the presently, and in the morning early will we both fly toward Belmont. Come, Antonio. Exeunt everyone. We have seen how Portia has saved the merchant. Now tarry soft, do not leave. Let us now see how the lawyer penalizes her husband for having given away the ring that he had promised to treasure above his own life. By way of thanks for their work, the disguised Portia and Nerissa each asked for the ring they had given Bassanio and Graciano in their true identities. Reluctantly, the men agree. Portia and Nerissa then return to Belmont and Bassanio and Graciano arrive soon with Antonio. The women put their men into begging forgiveness for giving their rings away. Then they reveal their identities at the court. Antonio learns that his ships are safe. The couples and Antonio are all happy. All is well that ends well. Thank you, dear audience, for your patience. I'm sure you have enjoyed yourself as much as our cast has enjoyed performing. Have a good night and bye.